Namaste and welcome to another episode of Dr. Fitness. So today we'll uh, talk about uh, adult diaper rash. So we're continuing a series about elderly care at home and uh, adult diaper rash is of course an important topic. So what exactly is adult di uh, diaper rash? Diaper rash is a red rash that you can see around the um, genital area in the folds in the front uh, by the hips and the and um, in the butt crack region or sometimes in the in the buttocks as well so diaper rash in adults looks just like it looks in babies and the treatment and prevention is also quite similar so here you see a uh, area of redness in the buttock region and then also in the buttock region but you can also see some small areas of redness in addition to the larger area of redness that you see around it and of course it can also happen in the front now what causes diaper rash? Diaper rash usually is caused either by a fungal or a yeast infection and number two is generally by chemical irritation. Chemical ir irritation from what? Chemical irritation just from urine and stool or feces that are just sitting around. So causes of that can be diarrhea or sometimes if you have too much constipation that can come out as overflow diarrhea. It can also happen from urinary incontinence and also very importantly infrequent change of diapers. Very rarely bacterial infections can cause a red rash or a diaper rash, um, but uh, that is not quite so common. Now, what are some other things that mimic uh, diaper rash? Right? Stage one pressure ulcer or bed sores can also mimic uh, pressure ulcers, uh, pr uh, diaper rash. Now, people who get diaper rash are also the exact same population that is also at risk of getting bed sores, right? So people are elderly, they're lying around, they have decreased mobility, so they can also get pressure ulcers or bed sores. Now, stage one pressure ulcer, which is shown in the second picture here, looks just like a diaper rash it is red that is but the skin is intact it's not broken down the second picture that you see is the next stage of pressure ulcer where you actually see an ulceration or an opening in the skin now pressure ulcers can up occur in some of the same region as a diaper rash in the buttocks um, in the lower back but it can also um, occur in the uh, outer portion of the hips the bony prominences it can happen in the upper back it can happen in the back of the head and in the heel region depending on what position the patient is uh, constantly um, um, in so there's also other uh, dermatological conditions that can cause a rash also in the in the diaper region so don't confuse this with diaper rash uh, Diagnosis of uh, pressure ulcer is very important because the treatment, of course, like you know, is very, very different. So what can we do at home to prevent a diaper rash or to decrease the frequency of diaper rash? Number one is change the diapers frequently. Every time it is wet or it is soaked in urine or, uh, or stool, please change it. Do not wait. Now, when if the patient is partially mobile, uh, please put him in a shower chair or a portable commode wheel the patient to the bathroom and wash the area uh, once a day during a bath. So whenever you're spraying or pouring water, it's just more uh, successful in getting the small pieces of stool out in that area and prevent uh, the chemical irritation that it can cause. However, if you're not able to move the patient at all, patient is completely bed bound and, and uh, or the doctor has told you not to move the patient, complete bed rest, then please take a warm, damp cloth and just gently dab it. Do not scrub it, do not wipe it, then it can cause more excoriation of the skin. Now, once a day after a daily bath or sometimes more frequently, two, three times a day, or perhaps if there's a severe diaper rash after every diarrhea or every bowel movement, I suggest that you just put coconut oil to prevent it. Uh, you can also use uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline like it's called or if you have a diaper rash cream at home that is also equally good. So anything that creates a barrier at least once a day but of course if there is a diaper rash you will need to do it more frequently than that. Very important to prevent is to give a patient a diaper free time at least one to two times a day maybe for half an hour to an hour. I generally tell people after their bowel movement uh, to make it less messy uh, just leave the area open to air uh, put a long gown or very loose cotton cotton shorts uh, you are uh, just put a thin sheet over the patient without a diaper uh, you can also take a fan and dry it or if you have a hair dryer just put it in the cool mode hold it from a distance don't hurt the patient and just dry that area out that prevents moisture from accumulating and uh, diaper rash um, chances are reduced when you do that 
very important if you have diarrhea, if you have incontinence, consult a doctor and see what other remedies can be um, uh, that the doctor can provide to uh, help you with the diaper rash as well. So treating the underlying cause. Now, treatment of diaper rash is very similar to prevention, but has to be done more frequently. Air drying, uh, barrier creams such as I suggested. Uh, most of the barrier creams have zinc oxide and petroleum jelly or zinc oxide and aquaphor in them. So they create a barrier that where the stool and the feces doesn't touch and irritate the skin. Okay, so if there is a yeast infection, uh, which is quite common, your doctor might prescribe an antifungal cream. Now, if you go to the pharmacy on your own, you might want to watch out that antifungal cream sometimes come with steroids and you have to use that with great caution because it is not generally good uh, to be used in the diaper area. So diaper area is quite common, but hey, the good thing is you can do a lot of things to prevent it and you can... Um, uh, save yourself from agony and the patient can also um, uh, be saved from a lot of pain uh, from uh, this condition so thank you so much for watching a uh, related topic uh, to diaper rash is urinary incontinence and I hope you've watched that video so more uh, tools that you have you're able to take care of your elderly better at home thank you so much for watching I like you also know we have a fitness channel for elderly people and for middle-aged people who are trying to start exercising at home so please feel free to share this video with your friends and families and hit the like button as well feel free to comment and let me know how we're doing thank you again and we'll see you next time